Hello violin players, welcome to Prime Strings and to the Learn to Play Suzuki Violin course in 30 days. I am Henriette and today is day 11. In this lesson we are going to practice the A arpeggio and we will be learning Song of the Wind. And by the end of this lesson you should be able to play both with a good left hand technique. So let's get started. I will play you the tuning notes first. Here is your A. with an A scale playing every note twice with long bows and using the fourth finger at the top of the scale as we did in day 10. So here we go, twice every note I'll count us in for four. One, two, three, four. page 30 and we are going to have a look at the A arpeggio which is here where it says letter A. You can see perhaps at this note this tune starts on an A, then two fingers on A, then an open E string, three fingers on E, then E, then two on A and it finishes on an A but you can perhaps just about to see that I have written a repeat sign here which is two dots and it means we go back to the beginning and we'll go A, 2, E, 3, E, 2, A. I like to play arpeggios with a repeat because it takes me literally no more than 20 seconds and you'll get so much more out of learning this arpeggio so it's a good habit to have. So let's play this now. When you play this with me, try to hover your fingers above the strings. I'll count us in for four. One, two, three, four. In a moment we will be playing this same arpeggio again and this time I would like you to check that your fingers fall on their fingertips. So if you press your fingers really hard down they might go like that and I want you to check this time that your fingers stay upright on their fingertips. If you find that difficult because your nails may be too long 
then you need to just cut your nails. Violin players always have got short nails on their left hand fingers. So try and play this time to avoid doing that, but staying on your fingertips. I'll count this in for four again. One, two, three, four. <laughs> page 28 in the book now. We are playing Song of the Wind. When we read it through you can probably see that the beginning is just like the A scale. Now let's have a look at bar three. In bar three we have got one finger on the E string, three on A, then three on E, and then one on E and a zero in open E string. And something special happens here. First of all, when we practice it, I would like you to try and leave your first finger down on the E string while you play the third finger. Now the third fingers, I am placing my third finger in between the two strings, in between the A and E string, so I catch both strings with one finger. Okay, let's practice that first. Let's catch two, two strings in one finger and let's hear what that sounds like. For most people that's quite difficult to do, but I'm, I'm sure you can try it again. Here we go. Place your finger in between the two strings. Now let's slowly play as it is printed. So we go one on E first. Here we go. Place your third finger on both strings. And let's try that again. So you may stop this video and play it a few more times on your own. Uh, you will notice in your book that this section comes twice. So you've got that on the first line and the beginning of the second line is the exact same thing. So you can practice it twice in your piece as well. After that, in the middle of line two, there are only notes that I think you are familiar with. One thing though that you will need to know is that you start on the fourth finger on a down bow uh, in the middle of line two. So you will need to retake the bow in the rest. So bar six is, a, a four, is an E, down bow, and then you retake the bow, and then you've got a fourth finger, like that. So let's now go back to the beginning of Song of the Wind and let's play it very, very slowly so we put it all together. I'm going to count us in for four and you start at the heel of the bow and you play half bows. One, two, three, four.
I don't know if you've spotted, but between bars 10 and 11, I did retake the bow again, because there is two down bows in a row. You can see that little um, upside down square. Um, that means that you play down bow, and we know that down bow goes in this direction. So you have two in a row, so you go and lift the bow off in the middle of the bow, and then you put it back down again. Uh, you may also have seen that at the end of this piece there is a repeat, like we repeated the arpeggio with two dots, we also have got a repeat in this piece. So let's repeat it again from the beginning and we'll play it equally slow as a moment ago. One, two, three, four. For those of you who are super observant, you may have noticed that on every note there is a dot and that means that you play these notes staccato and you may have heard the word before. Staccato means short um, and there is a school of violin teaching that says you can start playing short notes. That is not my opinion though. I would like you to play your bow strokes and connect them all together like we've done. So rather than separating your bows, I'm hoping that by this stage you can play, up, play your notes joining up all the notes. sounds much more advanced so I'm hoping you're aiming to eliminate the staccato notes and to play uh, your notes much more smooth and connected. Um, that will sound much better. Now let's play this tune one more final time and we're going to speed it up a little bit. I'm going to count us in for four. One, two, three, four. few days. I'm already looking forward to day 12 where we will be checking in with the fourth finger and where we will be learning long long ago. I can't wait to see you then. Goodbye! <laughs>